Today, we'll unveil 8 seemingly harmless habits that actually steal 3 hours from your day. You might be surprised by how simple things like looking for shortcuts can hinder your productivity. Do you ever feel like time FLIs by faster each year? It's not your imagination. As we age, time becomes more precious, which is why Warren Buffett says it's one of the two most valuable things in life, along with love. But here's the irony, while Buffett enjoys control over his time, many young people feel like they've lost control of theirs. I'll show you how to have the best advice in your life, and this will blow your mind. We'll unveil 8 seemingly harmless habits that actually steal 3 hours from your day. You might be surprised by how simple things like looking for shortcuts can hinder your productivity. Why do some people keep taking detours? Be sure to listen to the story of this cattle thief. A cattle thief was caught, and the county boss was very angry. In the past, farming cattle was a big deal, so how could he steal it? The judge gave the cattle thief three choices. The first was fine 10 kilogram of silver, the second was to jail for 30 days. The third one is to eat 2 kilograms of cow dung. The cattle thief was worried about the money and didn't want to eat cow dung. So he thought he was young and strong and chose to go to jail for 30 days. But when he got jail for 15 days, he couldn't stand it anymore. Then he chose to eat cow dung, so he started eating cow dung. After a few mouthfuls, he vomited them all and he couldn't make it. In the end, he obediently paid 10 kilogram of silver. The moral? Shortcuts often lead to more pain and wasted time than taking the straight path. You might spend hours searching for an easy way that doesn't exist, instead of focusing on the proven approach. Ready to stop the time wasting and take control? Tune in for the rest of the video and discover how to reclaim your precious hours. There is an entrepreneur who told such a story. He once had such an experience with Musk. In 2014, Tesla CEO Musk went to China. This entrepreneur said he had the opportunity to meet with him alone for 30 minutes. At that time, Tesla was facing the biggest difficulty in the Chinese market. The idea is to build public charging stations. This entrepreneur knows the executives of Sinopec and Sinopec is also willing to let its 500 best gas stations have cooperated to build charging piles at the gas stations. So when he met with Musk, he presented this plan that he thought was very awesome. He introduced it to Musk, but when he mentioned Sinopec, Musk immediately said stop. He says Tesla's mission is to wean the world off fossil fuels. Cooperation with Sinopec is a shortcut and I have no interest in it. The original 30-minute exchange only lasted 5 minutes. Musk refused to cooperate with petrochemical companies. It's because he knows that those who take shortcuts end up taking detours. To take shortcuts or not to take shortcuts is a question of long-term gains. You took a shortcut to do this today. You did succeed. You are very efficient. Maybe you took a total of 100 shortcuts, and only 10 of them were successful. 90 other failures to take shortcuts. Wasted a lot of your time. Your overall efficiency is probably not as good as that of someone who doesn't take shortcuts, and just plays it safe. It may seem stupid to not take shortcuts, but it has one of the biggest benefits. Stability. As long as the direction is correct, its income is very stable. Many times we waste time constantly looking for a better way. In fact, there are so many better ways. We are always too smart. Know how to adapt, but forget that no matter how good the method is, you still need to implement it. Everyone who doesn't understand opportunity cost. Do you know that there is a term in economics called sunk cost? A typical example is this. You go to a movie and buy a movie ticket. As a result, when the movie has played 20 minutes, you think the movie sucks. Let me ask you a simple question. Will you continue the movie or will you stop? In fact, 93% of people will continue to watch the movie because he feels that he spent 10 bucks to buy a ticket and he will lose money if I don't watch it. In fact, it is a real mistake if you look at it because it is already a sunk cost. You should give up this movie completely. For a two hour movie, you have at least 1 hour and 40 minutes left. You can go drinking with friends, you can go drink coffee, you can go home and sleep, which may be more cost-effective than watching this crappy movie. Everything that has happened must be given up. 
After you have invested all your emotions, you also need to dare to give up. Since it's a sunk cost, and it's uneconomical, give up as soon as possible. This is my suggestion. You have to learn to let go of things that don't belong to you. You can't grab new things by clenching your fists. Everything in this world has a way out in the end. That is to just let it go. Things are already like this. What else can we do? It's just like that. No one can go back and start over. But anyone can start today. Giving up is a kind of wisdom. You can think about whether there is anything in your life you should give up, but you keep persisting. It means you have invested a lot of time in this matter. A lot of emotion has been invested, so you have to give up on it at this time. The problem is that if you don't give up, you have to continue to invest more time. Sometimes, although we always emphasize that we should insist on doing something, don't give up easily. But for some things you did wrong or shouldn't do, you must learn to give up. For example, if you buy a house because you find it troublesome, you just go to the sales department to look at the model house. Moreover, it was packaged and renovated. Without checking the developer's qualifications or considering the location, and didn't know much about the surrounding area. After finally paying the money, and happily went to take over the house, later found out that the location of the house was not good, the quality and structure of the house were defective, and the decoration was not perfectly done. So, big trouble now. For example, some people quarrel with their partners when they are in a relationship, and they find it troublesome to apologize or comfort their partner, and didn't have to be their last lover and regret it in the end. I wish I had apologized in the first place. A director named Thomas once told a story about a friend called Richard who owned a restaurant and his business had been very good for more than 10 years. Every day, many people rushed to his restaurant to eat. Director Thomas is very curious about how his friend manages to do it without promoting it. Business was still so booming without marketing. Later, the restaurant owner revealed the secret. As long as you go to the vegetable market to pick vegetables at 6 a.m. every morning, you can continue to pick vegetables until 12 noon. Just stick with it for more than 10 years, and it will be fine. When ordinary people hear these words, their first reaction is, it's too much trouble to spend so much time selecting ingredients. It's better to do less than to do more. It is human nature to avoid trouble. But the interesting thing about life is that, if you solve the trouble here, you can save some trouble elsewhere. Just like director Thomas' friend who owns a restaurant, he spends six hours a day shopping for food and choosing food. Putting a lot of effort into selecting ingredients and making dishes seems very time-consuming. But because the food tastes good, he doesn't have to spend any money or effort on promotion. Naturally, customers come to your restaurant, and most of the time we spend time solving problems right away. In order to have more time left, not being afraid of trouble is a cultivation and an ability. Pointless argument. One day, Confucius had a student who was sweeping the floor outside. A guest came and asked him, Who are you? He said, I am a Confucius disciple. The guest said, That's great. Can I ask you a question? The student said yes. The guest asked how many seasons there are in a year. He thought to himself, why should I ask this? So he answered the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. That person said it was wrong, and there were only three seasons a year. So the two finally agreed to have a bet on this. If there is a four seasons, the guest will bow three times to the students. But if there is a three seasons, the student will bow three times to the guest. Confucius students thought that he would surely win this time. At this time, Confucius happened to come out from inside the student happily asked the teacher, how many seasons are there in a year? Confucius looked at the guests and said, there are three seasons in a year. This student was so frightened that he didn't even dare to ask. When the man said to bow, he would obediently bow three times. After the guest left, he asked his teacher and said that clearly, there are four seasons in a year. How do you say three seasons? Confucius said, didn't you see that the man who came was all green? The student asked, who is he? He is a grasshopper. Grasshoppers are born in spring and die in autumn. He has never seen winter. If you talk about the three seasons, he is very satisfied. If you talk about the four seasons, we will be arguing until tonight. You will suffer some losses in the third season. 
But it doesn't matter if you bow three times. This story doesn't matter whether it's true or not. It is very useful to you. As long as you know how to use it, you can live 10 more years. Remember, the best ending will depend on the lesson about the dangers of shortcuts and the value of dedicated effort. Thanks for watching. Please help to like, share, and subscribe to my channel.